हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस टॉक विल टॉकिंग टॉक अबाउट बैंक कार्ड्स रिपेयर सो बैंक कार्ड्स रिपेयर इज अ कॉमनली डन प्रोसीजर इन पेशेंट्स विद एंटीरियर शोल्डर इंस्टेबिलिटी वेयर वी रिपेयर योर बैंक कार्ड्स लीजन विच इज नथिंग बट अ एंट्रो इन्फीरियर कैप लेबरल टीयर सो दिस इज अ गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड प्रोसीजर विच इज डन फॉर एंट्रो एंटीरियर इंस्टेबिलिटी so open gap bank card repair used to be the gold standard for uh, anterior instability patients but uh, these had these patients had problems of uh, external rotation restriction and secondary osteoarthritis uh, these days this it has been repra- uh, replaced by a arthroscopic bank card uh, repair so uh, it ha- the arthroscopic bank card repair has many advantages like uh, smaller incisions uh, also less po- post operative pain uh, faster and better rehabilitation a uh, shorter surgical time also and there are less number of post op complications like restriction of motion in these patients so uh, today we can easily say that uh, arthroscopic bank card repair has become the gold standard Uh, surgery for patients with a uh, anterior shoulder instability without any uh, glenoid bone loss so uh, steps of arthroscopic bank cards repair i usually tell my students that we usually used to have usually you, we need to follow the five p's to uh, do a good uh, arthroscopic bank cards repair the five p's are we start with pre operative planning then we start with uh, go on to the uh, the surgery where we do a good positioning get our portals right and do a diagnostic arthroscopy then we do a preparation of the uh, labrum and the glenoid then we do a placement of the anchors and do a capsulo labral plication and we sequentially place our anchors do the knot tying and complete our repair right from 6 o'clock up to 3 o'clock Uh, and this way we complete our arthroscopic bank card repair so surgery doesn't start when you actually start doing a surgery when you are inside the theater it starts when you first meet the patient and do your pre op planning so what all pre op planning we need to do in patients with shoulder instability you need to talk to the patient find out the history uh, move on to the examination and do relevant investigations so in patients with shoulder instability you need to talk about the index dislocation how did the first dislocation occur whether it was post traumatic or whether without any trauma or a traumatic post traumatic would have a structural lesion and would require a surgical repair a traumatic instability patient would uh, preferably go to a rehab uh, department for the primary treatment you need to talk to the patient as Uh, how many dislocations have occurred higher number of dislocations indicate a poor capsular tissue or may also indicate a, a bony uh, lesion inside the joint uh, how was the uh, how is was the first or index dislocation reduced whether it was self reduced some authors ask about sleep dislocation as they think that sleep dislocation indicates a poor capsular tissue which may uh negatively prognosticate your arthroscopic repair so you need to do your beaten scoring while doing your examination to see if the patient has generalized ligamentous laxity if the patient has score more than 6 by 9 in uh, such uh, conditions uh, these patients are usually not very ideal indi- uh, candidates for a arthroscopic soft tissue repair because uh, they have a inherent uh laxity in their collagen or soft tissues uh, you need to do your special test the, uh, for anterior instability you need to do your anterior apprehension test the jobs relocation test the bony apprehension test if you are thinking the patient has posterior instability you need to do a posterior inst- app- apprehension test uh, or your jerk test or the porcellini test uh, in uh, multi directional instability look for the sulcus sign you while investigation you always start with the most easily available investigation uh, do the radiographs always do uh, x rays in two or more planes uh, ap view 
Y view and axillary view is are the views I usually order for such patients. MRI would be the gold standard uh, uh, or the investigation of choice to diagnose your Bankart's lesion or the antero inferior labral tear, which is seen in here. So this uh, uh, labrum, the anterior labrum, would not be at the uh, anterior glenoid. Would not be. Uh, uh, situated close to the anterior uh, glenoid uh, look for a bone defect in the posterior part of the humeral head uh, this is the hill sacs lesion hill sacs lesion is usually situated superiorly it would be at the level of coracoid or above it uh, Look for any other cause like a Hegel lesion or a Alps Alps I seen here the labrum which should be over attached over here has fallen down onto the anterior glenoid neck or a slap lesion also slap is a superior uh, labral lesion. You get a CT scan where suspecting any bony glenoid loss or when you are looking when you look at any large. Uh, hill sacs lesion so if the glenoid bone loss is more than 20 to 25 percent you don't do a arthroscopic repair or you go for a letargy procedure also uh, measurement of your hill sacs can tell you whether a hill sacs is a on track or off track and then you can suitably add a remplissage procedure if it's a off track uh, hill sacs lesion so a CT scan will help you in planning of all these things. When you have done your pre-op planning, uh, then you can plan your patient for surgery. On the day of surgery, you start with positioning of the uh, patient. So patient positioning usually for the instability surgeries would be a lateral decubitus position. Uh, it would be a floppy lateral, it would be about 20 to 30 degrees posterior tilt of the patient so that the glenoid is parallel to the floor. Uh, then you starting from the posterior portal, uh, you make you start from the posterior soft spot, make the posterior portal and then make the anterior superior portal and the antero inferior portal as explained in our previous talks. Then you do a diagnostic arthroscopy look at if there is any uh, antero inferior labral lesion look at if there is any hill sacs lesion whether the hill sacs is engaging or not engaging hill sacs would in, uh, indicate off tra off track hill sacs and would require a remplissage proce procedure in addition to a uh, to a normal bank cards repair so do a thorough complete diagnostic arthroscopy and diagnose the pathological lesion when you have done a diagnostic arthroscopy you move on to the next step which is your labrum mo mobilization so at this moment you move on to the anterior uh, antero superior portal as your viewing portal so the antero superior portal becomes the viewing portal you are viewing from the antero superior portal and the antero inferior portal which is just above the uh, subscapularis becomes the uh, working portal so from the working portal you put in a uh, liberator so here you can see I'm, uh, the my uh, instrumentation is going from the antero inferior portal uh, i'll go back to the last slide and again uh, so that we can talk about the video over here so uh, I'm viewing from the antero superior portal. This is a liberator or posterior elevator, which is going between the displaced or the torn labrum, which is malunited on the antero superior aspect. So I'm trying to liberate the labrum from the glenoid neck, and I usually go up to six o'clock or beyond six o'clock so that I can liberate the uh, labrum thoroughly, and so that this liberated uh, lab labrum can be easily uh, pulled back to the glenoid surface uh, so that comes and re reunites on the normal position. How do, do I know that I have liberated my glenoid, uh, the labrum well? You will be able to see the 
सब स्कैपुलरिस मसल द रेड मसल बिटवीन द लेब्रम एंड द ग्लिनॉइड नेक सो दैट इज द एंड पॉइंट ऑफ लिबरेशन सो यू कैन सी यू शुड बी एबल टू सी सब स्कैपुलरिस मसल आफ्टर लिबरेटिंग योर लेब्रम यू टेक अ रेस्ट सो दैट यू कैन प्रिपेयर द एंटीरियर ग्लिनॉइड सरफेस टू द ब्लीडिंग बोन एंड बिकॉज हेयर द लेब्रम हैज टू reattach and reunite so usually use a rasp or a burr so that you can get a bleeding bone surface after you had labrize your uh, or sorry mobilized your labrum you go into the next step which is uh, your anchor placement and uh, so you can see uh, you from the inferior entero inferior portal you put in a labrum uh, first anchor sh uh, should be so as low as possible preferably around 530 uh, you take one of the lab, uh, the suture the uh, the two limbs so you take uh, there be two limbs of the suture you take one limb uh, posteriorly from the posterior portal then you bring in your uh, your lasso device and take a bite Uh, of the antero inferior capsule and antero inferior labrum uh, and pass your suture uh, lasso below that so i'll again play this video uh, so that we can uh, talk uh, in detail about uh, this step uh, so here i am placing the uh, the anchor at 530 position there are two limbs of suture would be seen i'll take one limb posteriorly from the post to the posterior portal then i bring my suture lasso from the antero inferior portal take a bite from the capsule and then to the labrum and bring the device below the labrum uh, you see the uh, device coming out below the labrum pass my uh, shuttle suture shuttle uh, again to the posterior portal now here do a, uh, now i do a shuttling of the posterior limb i uh, outside the skin i pass my posterior limb of the suture into the shuttle relay into the uh, thread of the shuttle and then pull out the uh, uh, shuttle along with my uh, suture lasso from the antero inferior portal at the end of this step i'll have a bite into the labrum and the capsule uh, which would be coming out entry anteriorly from the antero inferior portal so goal of this step is to grab a healthy bite of the capsule and the inferior labrum so that i can attach or tie this capsule and anti, uh, inferior labrum to the uh, place of anchor to the anterior glenoid uh, surface uh, the aim is to shift the capsule from inferior to superior and lateral to medial so your bite in the capsule should be inferior to the point of anchor and you should try and take as much bite of the capsule so that you can do a capsular shift along with the labral repair so you can tighten the joint and make it from a lax joint into a a bit of stiffer joint so that it doesn't re dislocate again the last step would be to tie your knots so with different types of knots are uh, described so if you know a sliding knot you tie a sliding knot uh, locking sliding knot is tied and then you follow it with several half hitches and then you bring your cutter and you cut the uh, uh, the sutures here uh this is one anchor placement and one bite from the uh, capsule and labrum which has been tied you need to put in at least three anchors uh, you go superiorly uh, put in at least three anchors at 530 position then 430 position and then 3 uh, 3 o'clock or 330 position so that you repair your antero inferior labrum thoroughly so at least three anchors uh, maybe more may be required to do a proper repair of the antero inferior labrum so anchors are placed close to each other 
and this uh, process helps in recreating a bumper at the end of the procedure you have should have a good bumper anteriorly and the head of humerus should be centered on the glenoid so we can see three anchors uh, in this uh, photo uh, which have tied the uh, anterior labrum boy back onto the glenoid so for a successful bank card repair you need to do a pre thorough pre op planning do a diagnostic arthroscopy to see if there is any concomitant pathology any uh, hill sacs which needs to be addressed any concomitant slab lesion which needs to be addressed uh, we need to have uh, good portals uh, the two anterior portals should be at distance so that they don't you don't bump into uh, your uh, the uh, the scope doesn't bump into your uh, instruments when you are doing uh, your procedure you need to adequately mobilize your labrum or the capsular labral sleeve you need to prepare your glenoid rim get a healthy bite of the capsule so that you do a capsular plication also while doing your uh, labral repair and use at least three anchors starting as low as possible and working superiorly pitfalls which need to be av avoided are a failure to address a concomitant pathology failure to shift and plicate your capsule uh, inability or failure to get multiple points of fixation we already said that at least three anchors three points of fixation need to be there and a good rehab we should not uh, the patient should not go early into its sports at least after soft tissue repair at least give 6 months for the uh, tissues to heal before he goes back to his sports so in summary plan well position your patient uh, well uh, have nice portals at the proper position prepare your labrum well uh, glenoid also do your glenoid preparation take a good uh bite from your capsule and labrum after adequately mobilizing your labrum so that you get a good plication of the capsule along along with the labral repair and place at least three anchors to get multiple points of fixation in your labral repair that's all for my uh, bank cards repair steps uh, thank you for listening